So, uh, young brothers and sisters, I always consider uh, this generation whose age below uh, 30, 20, 15, uh, you are actually, I consider, generation of the 21st century. So obviously, past is past. 20th century already passed. Whether good or bad, whether happy or miserable, cannot change now. The future uh, still open. So therefore, 21st century, uh, 13, 13 and a half years already passed. The remaining over 80 years, 80 years, 80, 80 years yet to come. So there is possibility uh, change. The present is the world. Uh, and particularly India. The present situation or condition, do you feel satisfied or not? Those people who uh, uh, satisfy, raise hand. Satisfy. Unsatisfy, raise hand. Uh, I must uh, also raise. Mm. Then, do you have more concern about nature disaster uh, like a tsunami and uh, And do you more concerned about man-made problem such as war? How much you feel violence? And in this country, violence, I think, comparatively less, but still too much also the exploitation. Corruptions and a lot of sort of female here or say the Casa rap gang, gang rap. Uh, these are man made problem, not a de nature disaster. So, how much, uh, I mean, those people who really feel serious about these man made problems, raise hand. Yes, me too, also. Uh, now think, man-made problem, since our own creation, therefore, logically, we human beings also have the ability to reduce these problems or eventually eliminate these problems. Can we do that? I believe we can do. I think this question, I, I may not just raise hand. I think now my, my generation is generation of 20th century. So we, <laughs> I, I think, enough problem we created. <laughs> now the, the generation of 21st century, uh, it is your responsibility to solve this problem. Uh, my generation and myself now watching, watching you, how to solve this problem by this uh, 21st century generation. Sometimes I jokingly telling people or young people, uh, 
you see, even my sort of life sort of sees uh, either, you see, heaven or hell. Uh, if I or the, the, the remain in, in heaven, then certainly I can watch you, whether you see you properly, you see, tackle this problem or not. Even I, uh, in hell, I think I can get some permission, two weeks sort of visit to uh, earth or human, uh, the, uh, human world and then watch. So therefore, uh, my generation now uh, ready to say bye-bye. So your gen this generation, younger generation, generation of 21st century, now you must sort of wake up, open your mind, should not sort of take for granted our life uh, as today go this way, okay. Should not feel that way. Uh, now, as you agree, a lot of man-made problem. Uh, this is, will not solve through prayer to God, to Buddha, to Jesus Christ, to Allah, no. Frankly speaking, if Allah, God, uh, Buddha, or Mahavira, if they have the ability to solve this problem, then the world, since, since after they came, I think the world should not have any problem. This shows they have no sort of the ability to solve this problem. Because we create this problem. So we must sort of uh, uh, struggle you see, to reduce this problem, finally to eliminate. And meantime, this country, for example, this country, as well as China, to most of the populated nation, the poverty immense. Marve. Poverty, immense. Uh, so we need, uh, I think India, since independence, I think education, economy, uh, all these fields, I think much progress. It takes a lot of progress. Uh, at the same time, every year, more mouth come. Now, according so uh, it did some sort of uh, so the, a survey. Uh, they say, end of this century, human population will reach 10 billions. When I first came as a refugee and visited Europe, 73, uh, around that period, we, we usually say 6 billion human beings. Now, 7 billion human beings. Over 30, 40 years. Now already. So, within this century, uh, end of this century, could be 10 billion. So, more mouth. So, uh, we need material development. Uh, the way material development, uh, I think, should have some kind of the uh, sort of say, sense of Socialist sort of what's the day thinking, from money, from profit, because uh, of the use, use for well-being of masses. That's I think very important. Now in those capitalist country, in Europe, in America, you see because of recent sort of economic uh, difficulties, uh, a crisis global economy. Uh, so you see, the number of economists now is rethinking about these, the uh, sort of past, sort of what's the, the way of doing or way of, way of, way of thinking like that. So uh, at the same time, uh, the uh, market-oriented sort of economy also is a have sort of dynamic force. That also a fact. So now, uh, you should use the think more seriously. 
I think 19, perhaps early 90, maybe, soon after the collapse of Soviet Union, uh, I have the opportunity, I have the opportunity to visit then Czechoslovakia on the invitation of President Havel. So at that time, I express now like those former as the communist uh, also the, uh, countries, Eastern European countries. Now the Soviet system, socialist system, centralized economy, more or less collapse. Now change, and I mean, it's collapse. Didn't work. Soviet Union itself, stagnation. Uh, so that's why uh, uh, the President Gorbachev you see, try to change. Mm. So, uh, now China also now, you see, their sort of socialist pattern, centralized sort of pattern didn't work. So, Ding Xiaoping also now changed that. Uh, at the same time, uh, the capitalist, the existing capitalist system, also, you see, uh, sometimes I think, uh, lack, lack of pay attention about gap rich and poor. Too much individualistic thinking. So therefore, at that time, as I express, now time come some kind of synthesized economy system. I think now India, when Pandit Nehru's time, the uh, socialism through democracy, that also didn't work properly. Now this, this country, a huge gap, rich and poor. Bombay itself now, a lot of poor people. Uh, so in any way, uh, uh, and the present India's economy system, uh, many of my friends say, you see, because of unsustainable sort of economy system. So now, economy field also, you see, you have to think more seriously. New way, uh, you should think. Then economy development alone, not sufficient. Money provides only physical comfort, not mental comfort. So logically, which creates, uh, which destroy our mental comfort, is mental emotion. There are two kinds of emotion. Some emotions are destructive. Some are constructive. So most cases, spontaneous, those emotions which spontaneously come, most cases destructive. Constructive emotion need combination of awareness and wisdom. That only through learning, only through training. However, the emotion which come through training, come through awareness, is much stronger because it have the, ba because of the basis of valid, valid. Not to love that, indeed. Emotions uh, that uh, you can develop through uh, awareness and has some valid support from knowledge. So those emotions uh, spontaneously come, those sound bases. Therefore, you see, we can, uh, as a, as a, we can, as a, we can reduce uh, this destructive emotion. So, the actually destroyer of our peace of mind is within ourselves. So the method or tackle this destroyer of our peace of mind must come 
through, uh, must come within mind. So awareness. Now here, uh, over 3,000 years, various different religious tradition, including Egyptian, very, very ancient sort of faith, and as was the Chinese and Kazakh Jyoti. Indus Valley. So Indus Valley sort of uh, civilization. I think several thousand years, since several thousand years, I think at least uh, maybe four, five thousand years, this faith or spirituality is it developed. This, I think because you see, uh, people eventually realize, uh, see, problem, which, I mean, Kasota, the the uh, problem or mental sort of the crisis, or uh, unrest. You see, these things, you see, can can be reduced through faith. Uh, so this religious tradition eventually develop. So in any way, uh, now the, the uh, realistically speaking, this problem is a universal problem. Entire seven billion human beings problem. So no matter one religion is something remarkable, will not be universal. So, there is no other choice. Without relying on religious faith, we must find some way, you see, to tackle these problems. Now here comes India's thousand-year-old tradition, secular ethics, secularism. This is very fit. Now today's world, seven billion uh, human beings. Out of seven billion, I often telling, over one billion human beings are non-believer. Anyone uh, can say, how many non-believers in this country? I think everybody pretend to be a believer. <laughs> if the 1.2 billion of Indian are truly believer, then how can corruption develop? Uh, so most of these corrupted people, suppose believer, I think they worship Shiva, Shivaji, or Ganesh, uh, so on. So they are not seriously believe. That. So now, firstly, a lot of uh, formally declare I am non-believer, uh, about uh, over one billion. Then among six billion supposed believer, but still, uh, uh, actually, in deep insight, not much uh, believe seriously. Recently, the president. His Holiness Pope dismissed one German, uh, I think, bishop or something. Mm. Uh, I really sort of uh, admire you see, the courage of President Pope. You see, uh, that German bishop, of course, as a sort of uh, uh, as the Catholic sort of uh, leader, I think he must sort of talk in church. Uh, Contentment. <laughs> and then his own private life, you see, even his uh, taps are there, bath no, tap. Bath tap, no. Uh, 30,000 30, euro or something. No. Mm. Uh, so, you see, he talks uh, contentment, simplicity. Uh, he didn't practice that. So, his own book found uh, uh, this is not, not right. So, uh, Pope dismiss him. I think in this country also, I think, I hope you know, some of the spiritual leader, I think should dismiss some of these corrupted believers. <laughs> uh, I, uh, uh, on my own sort of level, 
uh, among Tibetan, I openly criticize. You see, some of the spiritual leaders, you see, they uh, not not carry Buddhist teaching properly. And whenever some devote, devotees there, no. they really carry exploitation. Very bad. Now in China, number of Tibetan, they themselves are called spiritual, how say they? Kings. Uh, Kings. A spiritual king, Dharma Raja. About, I think, 20 years ago, I think, about, I think, 20 years ago, I met one Chinese from mainland China. And he told me, nowadays, some Tibetan uh, themselves call as a Dharma Raja. Uh, and then Chinese devotees, Chinese Buddhists, they really sort of, because of that, express devotions. Uh, and eventually, these Dharma Raja actually uh, seek money and sex. So that Chinese he told me, oh, you Dalai Lama, you should do something. And I told him, I'm in India. In India. I cannot do anything. So the important is those Chinese uh, also devotees, devotees, devotees huh? no. should know the quality of uh, a spiritual teacher. Buddha made very clear from Vinaya, uh, Sutrayana, Tantrayana, see Buddha state, uh, Buddha and those great masters stated, uh, in order to become teacher, you need such, 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 such quality. In generally, 10, ten points clearly mentioned. So therefore, uh, I think I, I must add uh, about 10 points uh, myself when I uh, check my own course. I think at least because of the because I to qualify. Uh, not fully qualified, uh, but some qualification there. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so I told, you see, I told, you see, that Chinese the, those devotees must study uh, in order to in order to become teacher or Buddhist teacher should have this quality. Once you know this quality, qualification, then watch the person, so-called Dharma Raja, whether this qualification they are not. Uh, till you're not fully convinced then simply, you see, deal these people, deal with these people see, as a sort of spiritual brother or sister and conversation. And through that way, check, check. What is their knowledge? What is their spiritual experiences? When you fully convince really qualified one, then uh, uh, consider as a, your teacher. Till convic conviction come, you should not receive any teaching as a teacher, right? no. as a guru. I told him that way. So therefore, recently I met one, mm, one lady. Actually, uh, I know, you see, uh, one daughter of one uh, great lay teacher. Right. No, no. Oh. Uh, actually, I received uh, many teaching from that uh, master. That master. master. Actually, Tengu Chen So, uh, so recently I met, you see, I mean, his daughter. Uh, he quite often you see, visit. Tibet and also the China proper like that. So uh, she told me, "Tan the chilo do go mara na kesi the." Do go re. Do go re na. I think okay. Mm. 
uh, uh, recently I met, uh -huh. she told me uh, some time back uh, when she visited China proper, uh, she met some young Tibetan Lama or some kind of elaborate sort of dress like that. So then she told me she quarreled <laughs> with those young Tibetan Lamas. <laughs> She told me like that. It's very correct, very good. I think such sort of uh, young sort of teacher or lama, young lama, you see, has a self-proclaimed way. No, sir. Uh, self-proclaimed. You see, this I think need openly criticism, criticize. Then maybe they realize. Otherwise, oh, rinpoche, 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 actually spoil them. Clear. Uh, uh, so, I think it's not true, Andy. That's not true. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, I mean, I don't know. Believer, believer. No. So, you see, among, uh, suppose, six billion believer, actually, I think, about one billion, I think, not very serious believer. Then one billion, not very serious believer. Then, uh, then perhaps five billions. <laughs> so therefore, now the religion, the various religious tradition, wonderful. I'm Buddhist. My daily practice, about five hours of practice, analytical meditation, very useful, very very helpful. Uh, but. Buddhism, in the terms of seven billion human beings, uh, cannot work. Perhaps now, the Christian, about uh, one billion, little over one billion, Muslim, uh, over a billion, Hindu, perhaps six hundred millions. Some time back, as some of my friend used to say that. And at that time, I think about I think 15 years ago, then they say Buddhist population about 200 millions. Uh, combine Hindus and Tip Buddhists, and then uh, about 800 millions. Now China uh, already uh, over 400 millions. So now uh, it seems to say about a uh, billion. Yeah. Around so about billions of Buddhist population. So in any way, uh, still, you see, the, uh, uh, any religion cannot be universally acceptable or accepted. So we need third way. That's India's tradition, secularism. I must make clear, in the West. Uh, some my friends, some Muslims, some uh, uh, Christians, they little sort of uh, I'll say they reservation. They have some reservation using secular because listen, they got the impression secular means a little bit of distance from religion. And worst case, they not distinction, atheism and secularism. It is, I think, quite understandable. During the French Revolution and the Bolshevik Revolution and the Chinese Revolution, there are some tendency against religion. Actually, if we precisely sort of look where, no. then they against religious institution, not religion. Religion means love, practice of love. How one human being, sensible human being, against the love, against the compassion? Impossible. Even animal. Very much appreciate affection, compassion. So we human being never against a city. Impossible to against, you see, a practice of compassion. However, religious institution 
uh, frankly speaking, many cases corrupted. Religious institution become like economy institution or some kind of sort of elite people's interest. I think French Revolution, the French religious institution, and King's special connection. Bolshevik Revolution, uh, the Russian Tsar, and elite people, and religious organization mutually helping each other. So in order to Kasoda, oppose. in order to Harsika, oppose. Uh, in order to oppose the existing elite sort of people uh, who exploit poor people. Since in their interest very much related with religious institution. So naturally it's necessary to against religious institution. So they use the name against religion. Religion is opium. It's understandable. Nobody can say compassion is opium. No, never say. Uh, but many religious institutions hypocritical way. So therefore, uh, so I think we must make distinction. Those revolution uh, appear, apparently against religion, but actually religious institution, not religion itself. One story, my own sort of experience. When I was in Peking in 1954-55, uh, I, I had sort of several uh, meetings with Chairman Mao Zedong and many other communist leaders. Oh, I really admire. Listen, they totally dedicated well-being of poor people, working class people. So at that time, uh, you see, one, uh, one occasion, Chairman Mao Zedong, you see, told me, uh, one occasion, Chairman Mao Zedong praising Buddha. He considered Buddha was revolutionary because you see, he against the caste system. Hmm. Uh, uh, then one occasion, that's actually last meeting, Chairman Mao Zedong uh, told me, your brain is very scientific minded. Then he told me, religion is opium. <laughs> uh, now, if Chairman Mao Zedong is still alive, I think Chairman Mao may, uh, may describe differently because a lot of scientists are really showing interest about the Buddhism, Buddhist psychology, ancient Indian psychology. One time in Tibet, the official sort of uh, as a paper state, Tibetans are very, very blind faith, with blind, blind faith, very, very kasa, backward. Uh, however, it's not necessary to eliminate that uh, with effort, more scientific education increase, it automatically disappear. Now I think really well respected, well known scientists really showing interest. So I think Chairman Moore, if today still alive, I think Chairman Moore may uh, get you see, different views. <laughs> so like that, you see, who can against you see, love? Uh, six, I mean, seven billion human beings, all come from our mother, all survived, grown up with mother's affection, parents' affection, and mother's milk. Soon after birth, no longer affection, child will die. So we all, seven million human beings, experienced how much important about human affection, human compassion, human love. Who can against that? So now, however, this is related with religion, then it's a certain sort of faith. And then become differ. 
but concept of or say the kasota uh, experience appreciation of affection is something universal so now without touching religion secular way educate importance of this value are uh, the secular way I mean, secular ethics through secular way of approach so that i call beyond religion although i think yesterday also yesterday or day yesterday i already mentioned you see beyond does not mean above religion but actually secular ethics is basis of all major religious tradition so all major religious tradition you see the further sort of strengthening these basic human values uh, for that they use different philosophical views such as concept of god uh, and concept of law of causality and when we all this is when description about god about buddha the main sort of point is infinite love so it is very clear so that i want to to share with you now questions now so we have a list of students more than 200 questions have come so there is no attempt at censorship we have just picked questions based on uh, coming together of what students have put together i will announce a student's name if that student is there there is a microphone there please ask your question please make your question be short my first question is daniel disuza there where okay, is jay krishna patel okay, let me ask the question a person has to choose from the following what he loves to do or what he must do what should he choose should he give up on love or should he give up on duty kasa mije ke se lega che che ko che lega che ti kran tawe ko ne lan che ka ka she yebe tam che ba ta che ko ya ji che ga ta ya na inji minji che ko ya ji ze wan sor shi ti ni dam go na ka ge dam go na se oh i think obviously uh i i think the uh work which fit you then uh, some kind of uh, so the enthusiasm come uh, work which something impose uh, then difficult to develop enthusiasm so the work itself then will not be very top quality right? top quality right no so oh. so it is i think uh, uh, important Uh, even if a person who give you some jobs i think should interview the employees where employee what is their sort of cause of the mental disposition and their interest i think here uh, the arya deva and 400 verses is he clearly mentioned students different mental disposition very important to know the different mental disposition then accordingly treat buddha himself you see taught different philosophical views which contradictory why you see uh, buddha emphasis importance of stability according the person who have different mental disposition so it is very very important something impose then hypocrisy come and then i think in this country kasachi would complacency is there complacency now complacency complacency right you could do something but not top quality japanese product Oh, so highly good kasuda, kasuda. Good quality. Oh, good quality. Really, it's, it's the same sort of same thing, uh, but India sort of product, not much polished. 
Japanese product very much polished. <laughs> I think German as well, I think. Uh, so sometimes we uh, little bit sort of cause that chick cause this this one. No. We take things for granted. Oh. So I think anyway it is good the practice of contentment. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Divya Mistri, is she here? Divya Mistri, please come. Come here in the middle and ask the question. I, can ask, I can ask or on her behalf. So her question is. On one session. Or this. This. This session. Yes. Her question is How do we make studies, fun, and spirituality run on the same track? Do we need any religion other than humanity to grow in life? I think the mental level, peaceful, self-confidence, relaxed, I think very important for study. Too much anxiety, some kind of kasuta, tense way, some no, tension. Okay. Tension. Tension. I think very bad for study. So, study with full relax and relaxation very much related with self confidence. Self confidence very much related with honest. Truthful. Clear. So that's my view. So, religion, as I mentioned earlier, is up to individual. Uh, the, uh, the problem, I think, the, the why I'm sort of emphasis the secular ethics is usually. You see, people, many people, uh, feel practice of love, compassion, forgiveness, tolerance. These things are religious matter. So people who have not much interest about religion, then they also forget or neglect about these things. That's a mistake. Whether you uh, accept religion or not, up to individual. But so long we are human beings, we cannot neglect about these basic human values. This is for your own interest. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we all come from our mother. We all deeply experienced human affection. That uh, human love affection, you see, absorbed in our blood. So therefore, uh, the opposition, anger, hatred, fear, so constant fear, uh, uh, anger, hatred, constant fear, constantly sort of occur. The, some medical scientists say, eating our immune system. This is not religious sort of teaching. Scientists say that. Last over now last almost now 30 years, I have serious sort of engagement or dialogue with modern scientists, mainly in America and also in Europe and also a few occasions in India. And now also you see begin, also you see have some occasion in Japan. So through these sort of discussion, uh, it become very clear. Uh, the destructive emotions are very, very harmful for our health. 
And then also, one time in San Francisco, you see the, uh, some conference about uh, uh, crimes among youth. There are scientists, social, social workers, and then some uh, medicals. Uh, I think they, uh, I think they, they carry, I think, three days sort of seminar. Uh, the last day I participated. So then, the, the, all the sort of the, the participants unanimously agree the basic sort of cause of crime rate increasing is lack of compassion in the society, in the family. They mentioned that. So, uh, so the uh, genuine sort of the, the sort of, I mean, concept of uh, affection, uh, these are very much related uh, well-being of humanity, like that. No. This one, then this one. Next question. This question is from Aradna Mittal. If she is here, she can. Yes. Hmm. I think those people who have some question, they yeah. come. No. Come Riya here, Punjabi, come is she there? She can come after. Riya no. Punjabi. I think not necessarily read you see their name. I think okay. those okay. questions come. Fine. More so, faster. Okay. Good morning. Your Holiness, my question is that there are many gruesome war crimes and innocent people become victims of that. So how does their good karma help and compensate them then? Because <laughs> That's a difficult question for me in, uh, in Muslim countries, uh, in Syria, a lot of problems. Uh, I mean, the according to Muslim tradition, they should find some answer. Then, uh, then, I don't know. As far as Buddhist, uh, then, you see, uh, and also the, the, uh, at least I think uh, ancient Hindu tradition, Indian, Indian tradition, you see, we believe life after life. So no matter how difficult it is, should not sort of, uh, commit harmful to others. Here I want to, uh, uh, with this connection, I want to mention the real meaning of forgiveness is uh, not sort of accept whatever they've done. Where? No. no. We must make distinction. Action and actor. As far as actor is concerned, person who, because Property. Yeah, the perpetrator. Uh, the perpetrator. Perpetrator is concerned. Uh, you must keep a sense of concern of their well-being. As far as their action is concerned, some just, unjust action, where? Right? Unjust. Unju unjust action. Or uh, take, so I say, the advantage on you. Then, as far as the action is concerned, sometimes we need counter, sort of what's the day? Measure. Uh, uh, countermeasure. A countermeasure in order to stop their wrongdoing. Out of sense of concern of their well being, if I let their sort of wrongdoing, then they may increase or they may carry continuously. So ultimately, they will suffer from 
uh, viewpoint of karmic uh, law, they committed negative karma. So they have to face negative consequences. So out of sense of concern, uh, try to stop countermeasure without anger, with sense of concern of their well-being. So it is important <laughs> distinction. So forgiveness uh, means you not let anger towards that person. I think, for example, our own case, my own case, we oppose the, some of the Chinese hardliners policy. We criticize and oppose, but never develop anger towards these people. We always keep a sense of compassion, forgiveness. We can make, it, we can make this distinction. Action is concerned, oppose, criticize. Actually, it's concerned, sense of concern. Oh, how, how bad. A pity. Like that. Okay. Thank you. Come, next question. Students, please come up on your own and ask the questions. There are so many of the questions here. Please so ask your question directly. Uh, students, please. Please. So, please, about one hour. Please line up be oh. behind. So, those people. Those who have uh, questions, then come, come, come here. Uh, yes, now start, start. You, you start. Namaste, Holy, uh, His Holiness. I'm really honored to be given this opportunity. I'm Sri Lanka. Closer, closer my to the question, mic. My question is framed on the thought that His Holiness is a human being. And each human being has his own personal inclination about doing something in life which he likes. So, therefore, my question is for His Holiness is very simple. If you were not chosen to be Dalai Lama, hmm? what would you have been? I may say silly question. <laughs> not much relevant. Uh, I've already become Dalai Lama. Since I think uh, three, uh, two, three years, uh, two, three years age. So not much use. <laughs> but, but then I think similar question, if I'm not male, if female, and what would you feel? <laughs> and in your own case, if you are not female, male, then what do you feel? What do you wish? Silly, silly question. Next, next question. Next, my Yes. If given the choice of living the life of food, his Holiness, 14 Dalai Lama, again. Asa. Will, will you change it in some way or leave it in the same way? Kasa. I want to say that the good and juicy, but the Yanja, Chick Peg or some Yanja, Tara, Nango Chongba, you know, did Nangi Yanamina. Oh, no, that is about the future. Mm. Uh, actually, as early as 1969, one of my official statement, formally I stated, whether this very institution of Dalai Lama should continue or not up to Tibetan people. If majority of the people feel this institution no longer relevant, then this institution automatically cease, no problem. Now in case the concern be now, actually, I think, I think 2000, I think, I think, I think two years ago, I think two years ago, one of our spiritual leaders, Tibetan spiritual leaders, is gathered. Oh, from time to time, so we gathered. Uh, so, uh, the last our gathering, uh, the, uh, See, we made one statement. My age, about the future of Dalai Lama, including institution, uh, when the present Dalai Lama's age reached around 90, around 90, no. 
then we will decide final decision will make uh, so that officially uh, with full sort of sen census no, no. census consensus or consensus yes consensus with all the uh, spiritual leaders of tibet tradition tibetan tibetan buddhist so and then theoretically i think 15 20 years ago in paris one women's magazine uh, one correspondent of that magazine you see asked me one lady asked me in future dalai lama uh, can be any female dalai lama <laughs> then i immediately said oh yes possible reason uh, in tibetan tradition uh, i think the karma for reincarnation that i think now over seven centuries so similarly the same sort of period there is something doji pamo reincarnation also now uh, over seven centuries so all the reincarnation are female so uh, there are such sort of uh, well known famous sort of reincarnation female reincarnation there it's not this is not new so then i told uh, that kind of reporter yes possible female dalai lama in case this institution still continue then i told uh, if female dalai lama comes then a female must be very very attractive female <laughs> or oh, ugly ugly female dalai lama i think uh, some people may not pay much attention uh, beautiful face <laughs> then then more no boy boy <laughs> i think the present dalai lama also if my face something like that i think people <laughs> some people may not pay much attention is it <laughs> like that okay next question can i request one question per student yeah. uh, good morning your holiness uh, the world as we know has people who believe in numerous faiths and cultures and traditions even religions they are divided on the basis of the culture or the religion that they follow uh, i have heard from many great people that there is only one god and he is uh, there are many various avatars of him on this earth uh but my stand on it why people are still being divided on the name of the god or the tradition that they follow chulu thenge chulu thenge kharch nahi hongu yanas that's i think firstly i mean two causes firstly uh i think in most cases uh, real cause is not a religion but economy or political power i think past history conflicts in the name of religion actually i think political reasons economy or power like that uh, in some cases i think truly uh, because you see they uh, believe one religion one truth that's the problem sense of one truth one religion that apply to the society then this problem start so we, yesterday also i mentioned the sense of one truth one religion and sense of several truth several religion itself looks contradiction but no contradiction in terms of individual sense of one truth one religion relevant and sense of community several truth several religion is relevant relevant now india's case uh, this country a thousand years multi religious nation a community so modern india constitution modern indian constitution they based on secularism india's constitution cannot based on hinduism and there are a lot of christians a lot of muslims so therefore in the term that's a reality so then 
I noticed it's Muslim in this country, Muslim in Malaysia, Muslim in Indonesia, particularly Bali area. There are many Buddhists, many Hindus also there in Bali. And then Muslim in Arab. Uh, you see, I said they follow same Quran, five times sort of prayer, pray uh, daily. However, they are sort of thinking different because of the circumstances. Indian Muslim, from their birth, they already sort of take for granted there are many different religious traditions. I think, for example, the Muslim in Bodhigaya. Uh, I think their ancestor, I think, came to uh, Bodhigaya uh, for, dis uh, for destruction of Bodhigaya temple. Nowadays, you see, those Muslim shops, the more Buddhist, because of pilgrimage, where yes, pilgrims. Uh, pilgrims come, uh, that's their customer. So we have very good relation with the Bodhigaya Muslims and Buddhists. Many occasions, they, they have one school, Muslim school. They invited me. Uh, so many occasions, I visited there. Uh, uh, they give me very tasteful tea. I still remember, wonderful. I think because of that day, maybe I a little bit tired. So then afterwards, we visited their school, and some chat, and they provide me tea. Oh, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you see, Something is very, because of the because of the environment, something very. I mean, the concept of several religions, several truth, from the childhood isn't there. Whereas, you see, there's some country, only one religion, Muslim. Then it is sometimes difficult. Similarly, we Tibetan Buddhist. When we were in Tibet, we felt, oh, Buddhism is religion. But others, so-so, like that. After we came to uh, outside Tibet, then contact with more people, then we develop oh, wonderful religions. So environment makes differences. Uh, therefore, uh, the closer contact with other tradition is very, very important. So interfaith our last several years, and the Assisi meeting, late Polish Pope, Kasa, Pope John Paul II. Oh, uh, wonderful, wonderful. I have, so I had a several occasion meeting with him. Wonderful. So since first meeting, we once developed very sort of close sort of feeling because his background from communist Poland. I also spent at least nine years with Chinese communist. Uh, so, so he initiated the RCC meeting. Really wonderful. So, Vatican, uh, now you see they use religions, not just religion. These are very, very, very good. So, very realistic. So, more wider contact. Uh, I think two years ago, I met some group, Muslim, uh, from some uh, few Arab UAE. Muslim countries. UAE. UAE. No. And I think uh, Abu Dhabi, and I think a few more. Our group came there. Uh, we discussed something. Uh, and then including uh, the one, sort of, uh, one member she asked me, science and religion, you see, Kasota, uh, difficult, go, go together. And I told him, no problem. Science concerning matters, religion concerning insight. So no problem. I told, I told them, and then also, you see, among them, some teachers, some professors 
female professors there. So then uh, I express uh, my appreciation, equality, male and female, and Muslim, like that, female, but professor. Wonderful. So I told them, you should organize international Muslim conference about equality of female, male. So some Muslim, so a little bit sort of today, concerned about education for female. So outsider is cannot suggest. The change must start within Muslim. So I request them. Now here in your group, some female professors there. It's wonderful. Now you should sort of organize some kind of international Muslim conference and more discuss about these things I mentioned. Like that. So you can correct Chudi. Tamarwe. So more wider contact. That's I think important. Then also, as I mentioned earlier, uh, lacking you see, moral education about or conviction about moral principle and lacking oneness of humanity. So that really, I think, uh, war, any war, any violence, whether economic reasons, religious reasons, political reasons, the ultimate sort of basis is lack of sense of oneness of humanity. If people, both sides, consider others as a human being, and how can sort of they commit uh, or today violence? If you face some sort of danger on your life, you escape. You don't want. So similar feeling. They also, because of same human being, feel feeling with because with that feeling, automatically restraining. So sometimes you see, uh, uh, I saw one picture. I think, I think during Second World War, uh, one. Greece, Greek soldier, you see, has a felt bullet about to fell. The enemy side soldier taking care. Officially, each side order shoot other. At the human level, sense of concern. So the person now dying uh, and taking care. So we must promote you see, that human levels of feeling and on the basis of sense of oneness of humanity. That really need. Then, okay, uh, uh, it's a different, different faith. It's his or her interest. No problem. But still, same human brothers and sisters. I think we need that very I think we need that kind of sort of thing because of that kind of uh, global responsibility. Uh, global responsibility. Yeah. Thank you. Next. Thank you, Holiness. Your Holiness, I have a very simple question. If your aim in life is to attain nirvana, moksha, or high knowledge, then why waste one's time in attaining worldly knowledge and wealth? Yes, what? I think your own case. Yes. Uh, you are a student. Mm. So you are thinking mainly in f future professor or some sort of sort of specialist in a certain field. That's your your sort of aim. Now, me, me, now, meantime, you cannot neglect today's breakfast, today's lunch, today's dinner. Isn't it? You have to survive. 
uh, you have to take care your health in order to achieve your what's that goal and you really your life right now oh so same nirvana and moksha we cannot achieve today uh, even uh, it may take several lives so we have to uh, we have to think about you see the life after life the human body because nirvana animal no interest about the nirvana only we human being so without human be- human body you see you can't sort of make attempt to achieve nirvana so in order to in order to carry your long term sort of effort you need healthy body and meantime one alone thinking nirvana while millions of people suffer then uh, not uh, not not, pro- not because of the proper right? no. not proper even social animal simple animal one they are or they are companion die they worry uh, wound has wounded the leaking we are human being other human brother sisters suffer how can you just think about moksha so therefore oh. so therefore you see we have to uh, we have to take sort of concern equally temporary sort of uh, interest or benefit and long term benefit okay i'll just rephrase it I exactly wanted to know why delay the process when i'm young as young as a 25 year old when i could start the process go on a spiritual path why wait till a six, like a age of a 60 year old person then i decide now okay i've wasted most of my early years and now i want to be on this path of path of spirituality why not as early as now chindune chelu da dana mache de karjin chi go mare Kodu gagat zene lo tokjur gesona ni shine chi 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 gese tende to su shiro dil jan oh perhaps i think in the sense of corruption after you retired i think less opportunity corruption <laughs> so then you can be more holy person <laughs> but as far as training of mind uh must start from young age when you reach the age of retirement your energy all your sort of mental sort of also the energy or mental potential then begin to decline uh so the physical plus so the energy or these things intelligence these things before declining the start thinking meditate meditation very very important so you already did 25 years right no five years so now now should not delay yeah uh, <laughs> while you study also is some at least you see uh, 15 minutes or 30 minutes some kind of sort of meditation that's i think necessary then when you getting uh, when you reach the time of retirement because you already use use way no comba no. you you have familiarized oh, so. familiarized so then very easy but otherwise you see when you uh, you completely neglect then at the time of retirement now there's no other jobs then only thinking about next life or something or something <laughs> then reading also difficult <laughs> no uh hearing also some kind of difficult uh, so then i think too late isn't it uh madam the other tadi yes now next question thank you uh, good morning your holiness um i hope my question doesn't offend any religion or something 
भगवान बुद्ध इज कंसिडर्ड एज द नाइन्थ अवतार और इनकारनेशन ऑफ विष्णु एज पर दी हिंदू रिलीजियस बिलीव्स देन वाई डू थिंक गौतम बुद्धा आफ्टर आफ्टर निर्वाणा थॉट ऑफ स्टार्टिंग बुद्धिज्म वेन ही हिमसेल्फ वॉज अ हिंदू बिफोर निर्वाणा सो कसा अरे कुरान से तारे के हीरो एसोसिएशन है जब देन अवतार हो दी एन गुबदरेस सिगोरेस ही ने जब देन देखो ना सुन शुभ कब ला ना हिंदू छाती और ना जेल कौन कौन बच्चों ने नंबर रेस या खर्चिन चे लगू और रेस 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 एकॉर्डिंग सरो कसो तो यंत्रास ना करे यंत्रा पॉपुलरली का पॉपुलरली एवरीथिंग एकॉर्डिंग रिकॉर्ड आई थिंक टिल ट्वेंटी नाइन कॉलोनी ग्रुप आतो रहा ओ he remain uh, in the palace uh, in the palace so naturally so sort of, he learn uh, at that time sort of existing sort of uh, spirituality uh, buddhism not yet uh, developed and then uh, then he uh, actually you see there some sutra actually is mentioned uh, he study Uh, most of the sort of existing sort of spirituality and also practice then he his personal sort of experience he found some sort of uh sort of the adequate adequacy in adequacy inadequacy inadequacy no. then he spent uh uh then he want uh actually actually more serious meditation so he left paris then next to six years he uh, fasting that means you see the he seriously to meditate and meditate not just close eyes and thoughtlessness state not that way i think analyt- analytical meditation analyze 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 then he found you see the uh, now anatma theory uh, so he found uh, So many sort of destructive emotion related with strong feeling of i self so then he developed concept of anatma selflessness and again you see he meditate meditate then you see his kasota uh, his all these traces of destructive emotion then lesson 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 Then go look at it. Sanjay, it's from just now. Oh, thirty-five. No, he enlightened. So that's uh, uh, according uh, Pali tradition. Uh, mainly uh, Vibhasek sort of tradition. Uh, that's the explanation. Then uh, Sanskrit tradition. we have the concept of four kayas four bodies uh, uh dharma kaya uh sambhoga kaya uh nimana kaya and then jnana uh, kaya jnana kaya no i think like i think dharma kaya then jnana kaya then sambhoga kaya then nimana kaya so buddha shaya muni was nimana kaya So, Buddha Shaya Muni was the, actually, I think, the manifestation of Samuka Kaya. Samuka Kaya, so what is it? Ka arise from arise from Jana Kaya. Uh, and ultimate nature of these Kayas are Kasajuti, empty, uh, Tamata Kaya, like that. one my friend one american uh you see actually i think her sort of book i think already i think published now mm-hmm. i think one buddhist nun uh once she told me he she carry some sort of research work in thailand uh she found i mean she met Uh, some Thai uh, monks uh, one respected uh, Thai elder bhikshus 
Actually, you see, God vision Buddha surrounded by Arahat. Then he believed, oh, Buddha's spirit still there. Actually, Buddha still there. Uh, we cannot see commonly, but uh, he saw. Then his teach, his student, another uh, Thai bhikshu. Since he developed some interest about these four kayas, so uh, 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 that uh, student, of, of, um, student uh, of that is the uh, old sort of the monk. Hmm? Uh, actually, uh, took one uh, pilgrimage, one area where, what say, our Lukashara statue there. I think the border with China. I think. So actually, I saw a picture. That monk, you see, uh, bow yeah, down and praying. White light, directly come from that statue on his head. One picture, I, I saw that picture. So therefore, you see the Kazor. Tumung, tumut to Jenang, look you jig che. Yang tumum in the in the cushion of Shandran jig che, yoga resha. So, with regard to the life story of the Buddha himself, uh, there, there are two, uh, there could be two versions. One is on a popular level where people can have access to the Buddha and so forth. But on the other hand, there is an uncommon version of the, tier, the life of the Buddha. So, so these are a little bit mysterious. I think only Buddhist knows, no other. Uh, not, not relevant also. <laughs> <laughs> so this, the four kaya, uh, how to explain? Uh, at least the three kayas are so the phenomena which momentarily changing. So any momentarily changing phenomena must have substantial causes. So these three kayas, what are substantial causes? Ultimate substantial causes. Is basically continuation of our mind. Then, then the sensorial mind never become Buddha's mind. Uh, mental level, mental level also. You see, grosser level mind never become Buddha's mind. More subtle. At a dream level, subtle mind will not be will not become Buddha. Uh, very very subtle level mind. So that we call Buddha nature, Tathagata Karva, or Sukha Darshindaya. Like that. So it's a lot of sort of explanation. Uh, and one my friend, one American, now over 30 years, he sees meditation. As a result, uh, when he meditate, some dissolutions actually take place. And then he can maintain more subtler level of mind, three hours, completely sort of sensorial, stop, cease. Oh, it's actually happened. And then in Thailand, now one meditation center built by one American with the money of one German, I think millionaire. Uh, so there regularly some meditationers you see, carry meditation. So some of them, you see, can, medit can stay in deep meditation uh, three, four hours. It's actually, you see, happen. So I really is very, very keen to meet some of the sadhus is who spend in mountains. I, I think, except this year, or this year or last, last year, uh, recent sort of Mahakubabela, Otherwise, the previous, I think three times, I participated in Bella. So there, I met, you see, a lot of completely naked sadhus. I was told many of these sadhus remain whole year in snow mountains. 
So I really very, very keen meet uh, an inquiry. I think they must have a sort of experience of deep meditation. But so far, uh, not yet because of the fine, because of the materialized. Uh, not yet because of the materialized meeting. The last, the last sort of Mahakumbha Mela, uh, I got the invitation, so I ready to go. But then very day, uh, my charter plane, you see, fly. Uh, Dharmasala weather uh, not allowed me. Not allowed landing the air, aircraft. Then postponed a few days. Again fixed day, again, so Dham Dhamsala, Kangra, uh, Kangra Valley, uh, there are special sort of the Kasati temples. Kasati. Uh, Shiva. Shiva. Uh, Shivaji there. So it seems Shivaji not allowed me. Uh, <laughs> So I often used to telling people, the Lord Shiva, his permanent residence uh, is inside Tibet, <laughs> Mount Kailash. Yes, yes. uh, so that's Hindu God. Buddhist God, Buddha, was Indian. From the permanent residence wise, Shivaji was Tibetan God. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Tibetan Buddhist God, Indian. Millions of Hindus God, Tibetan. <laughs> <laughs> like that. So, so in these things, uh, very, very kasoda, kasoda, complicated sort of the philosophical views like that. Okay. Is it possible I can seek your blessings, Your Highness, uh, hmm? Your Holiness? Okay. Next question. Start next question. No, they did Come from the did steps. They? Yes. Uh, His Holiness, uh, my respect. Uh, His Holiness, uh, my respectful, uh, respectful obeisance. Louder, louder. Closer, please. Yeah. His Holiness, uh, my respectful obeisance is to you. I want to ask uh, for the students, particularly in this 21st century, there is a lot of exposure to sensuality through various types of media. And because of this, uh, many students are not able to concentrate on their studies. They are addicted to many bad habits. Uh, how, what message you will give to all the students how to be safe from this uh, sensual exposure and to practice uh, celibacy, particularly in student life? Practice study base here, you're talking about? Kursa. What question? Ting Sang is some little tattoo on a tajat and this will laminate tam and not so toy you need in Sani, Chick, Debesh, and one the shoes to the spoon of which the Lobjon, the same sum of the chair, and the Junior Dad and Demon, which the corners short of this. The Mayuia chair to touch it, Tapshito Karinas. This is the Lao. Lob to the red. Yes, I think again, you see, lacking conviction about inner value. So the existing sort of culture, I think, uh, because of the existing sort of lifestyle, a culture of materialism, there. Yeah. Culture, because culture of, uh, sort of, culture mare, because the. Uh, lifestyle, materialistic lifestyle. I think mainly because education system very much oriented about material value. So that's the problem. If student, of course, you see they use this uh, technology, these things, uh, but at the same time, they have the knowledge or sort of conviction uh, inner value, then Kasuda won't Kasuda. The Kadabet, Mobia, your corner, that connects to the Unimara. So, uh, of course, you cannot just be lost in the material uh, values alone. So, some you see, my friend, 
is who uh, uh, who now immigrate Europe, some European countries, and also some in Canada and America. See, many of them, you see, telling me uh, for making money, go there. These countries very good, and eventually. Uh, uh, Say want to return India. More sorority, spiritual sorority atmosphere. They say like that. So therefore, uh, I think you see people who have some sorority experience about inner value. Then yes, use material things, but will not be slave of these material things. Okay. Thank you. And I want to ask one more, one more question. Whenever it was asked to Buddha about uh, God and soul, he never answered. He kept silence. And uh, many ph uh, different philosophers interpret it differently. Uh, I want to ask what is your opinion? Uh, what was the reason for his silence? Uh, yes, there is some sort of different interpretation, some Buddhist literature. You see, uh, actually, I think whatever Buddha answer, the, the other person, you see, gets the wrong view. So, best thing is remain silence, unanswer, like that. I think maybe Buddha also is a little bit sort of busy. So, so if you see lengthy time, then he can explain a lot of things, but not sufficient time. Then simple answer, yes or no, create more misunderstanding. So best thing is silence. <laughs> but mostly it is being interpreted in an atheistic way. Karsa. Uh, people say that Buddha was non uh, he was non-believer, means he was not believing any creator, but he kept so, uh, silent. How, what, what we should derive from this? Oh, yes, I think he, he said uh, uh, the reason for his silence. The very sort of way for noble truth, clearly sort of mentioned. No, I mean things not come without cause, and within the cause, no permanent creator, but uh, a certain sort of what's today, uh, certain our action and a certain our emotion. So that is this. Uh, the second for noble truth. So, first noble truth and the second noble truth clearly indicates no creator. And then, uh, uh, some, I say, the Nalanda uh, uh, Master's writing, I think I remember particularly the uh, Dharma Kiddis. Was writing and also Shantadeva was writing in ninth chapter. You see, clearly mentioned. You see, uh, raise a lot of contradiction if you accept the Creator, as well as if you accept uh, unchanging soul. So, a lot of sort of questions raise uh, contradictions. So that's the way. Now here, Buddha state. Buddha himself stated, Oh, my follower, big shoes, scholars should not accept my teaching out of faith, out of devotion. Rather, uh, thorough investigation and experiment. So, therefore, you see, uh, they, I said, follower, follower of through his teaching. Always investigate, uh, not relying on quotation. Like that. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Take care, take care. Seems you have no sort of the proper sort of the sight. Sight, okay. Be careful, careful. Then I think the, the concept of creator or non creator, these I think better live to individual business. Uh, I think over a thousand years, you see, these uh, in, among the intellectuals, some debate is a never end, so better leave it. <laughs> so, according to one's own sort of, I say, the mental disposition. Uh, recently, I was in the uh, Netherlands. Uh, I give a talk, uh, uh, w one morning session, I explain about different religious sort of traditions, including Buddhism. And afternoon, uh, usually public talk about because of the secular ethics. And then I took some questions. So one lady, uh, about I think, uh, I think about, uh, I think, tw more than ten thousand audience. You see, the one one lady, you see, uh, to, uh, to express uh, when she heard about, you see, the Buddhism, uh, no concept of creator. Uh, and she felt very uncomfortable. Uh, uh, she asked me, you see, what to do. Then I told her, there's no problem. Uh, you find uh, benefit uh, out of the concept of uh, God, creator. So you believe that, it's much better. It's your business. Uh, I'm Buddhist. Uh, to me, uh, no creator is more fit. So that's my business. So no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Your Holiness, my hmm. question is, love is, love is a beautiful thing, but it's hard to get. How should we deal when we can't get the one we love? Kasa. <laughs> で、ちゃんと世話すぎて、やぼしみちです。ね、世話、あ、たぶんちでそのドゥカゴチカルトス、たぶんちでドゥカゴチカルトス。カレ。世話、世話とコラインビュー、ミカスチュエナディライエットン
also take your blessings. Okay. I, I think they, those uh, people who question, I think later you should come together and have one group picture. Okay. Thank you. So including uh, that sort of uh, the difficult eyesight also you should now uh, try to reach here. Mm. Okay. Now next question. Yes. Your Holiness, my question is, why, do, why a female does not get a freedom in a male-dominating world? Now here, I have something to say. Now, uh, in millions of years ago, human population very small. A small group or community also, very small group. I think mainly family basis like that. So at that time, no concept of leadership. All completely equal. So work together, whatever they got, share together. The Marxists say original communism, hmm. classless society. Then eventually, population increased. Uh, uh, population increase and the farming system uh, start. Then the question of the say, mine, mine uh, increase. So some uh, mischievous sort of activities uh, uh, happen. So the, the idea of leadership come in order to because of the control or judgment like that. Uh, so then at that time, no education. So uh, in order to become leadership, it's the only physical strength, like other animals. So male dominance then start. Even some religious tradition. You see, that social uh, cultural heritage, uh, some sort of uh, impact. So, uh, then education start. Education brings more equal. Uh, in modern time, Quite a number of leaders, exclusively female. Uh, I always remember Golda Meir, Israel. Oh, the lady, oh, really wonderful. Mrs. Taja. And also, you see here in India, uh, Mrs. Gandhi. So, these, you see, because of education and their ability, become like that. So then, uh, now, time come. Just mere education, uh, not sufficient. We must make effort, promotion of human affection, human love. In that respect, biologically, female have more potential. Some scientists investigated One sort of movie, picture, uh, which shows us passing through painful experience, uh, and then watch by one male, one female. Response, 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 female, much stronger. Because of biological factor, more sensitivity about others' pain. So for promotion of human affection, female should take more active role. So now, uh, I think the female should make uh, more effort, firstly education, then work in the society, 
And then sometimes, you see, like I think they were say the caste system. I think the lower caste people it should not remain silence or accept you see, the existing sort of unequality. Right. Inequality. No? Uh, one time in Delhi, some sort of discussion. One Hindu uh, Swami, uh, he is uh, involved with some sort of effort to change these things. And one lady also, you see, spoke quite strongly. Then I respond, yes, if you organize some demonstrations, peaceful demonstrations about these rights, then I will join you. So like that, so like that, I think people should be more active. And then females' right, like dowry, you should speak uh, more strongly against these unequal. And a few occasions in Delhi, I expressed uh, the mar one occasion from airport to to hotel in the city, I noticed this is some kasota, kasachuti, kuru chishu seche. No, they they have actually um, put up a kind of a structure, an oh. elegant structure. I thought maybe some sort of film, sort of was the shooting. shooting. I asked my driver, what what is going on here? He mentioned marriage. Oh. And then he told me, a uh, few lakhs spent for marriage. I felt uh, that's wrong. So, so then, uh, some occasion in Delhi, when I give talk, I mentioned those wealthy people, you see, at their sort of marriage uh, time, uh, Instead of spent several lakhs for building that, better uh, 20, 30 trucks with fruits and kaza, right. kaza, kaza, cheese or some other breads. And go Delhi city, those street children, the poor people, give them. Uh, that is the Meaningful marriage. What do you spend a lot of money? Just a few hours sort of ceremony. Meaningless. Waste of money. I think in Bombay also maybe that kind of thing. Those wealthy family in order to show their money. Silly. Foolish. Stupid. Really. No common sense. If every Indian, one billion Indian, have that kind of sort of rich, then okay, spend a lot of money, elaborately, where? okay. But millions of poor people remain there, same city. How can these people, you see, carry that kind of way, where? that kind of way of life? Clear. So, female should work hard. Non-violently, not violent way. <laughs> then you will lose male much stronger. <laughs> power of truth, power of reason. Then physical strength, uh, not much relevant. So power of truth, power of honest, power of compassion, uh, concept of equality. You should work hard. Thank you. Next question. Uh, with so much suffering and poverty around, should I feel guilty if I'm living a comfortable life? I think better feel something. So, I think that does not mean you should starve. No. It's meaningless, foolish. So you should alive, and your physical also kasoda should be kasoda, kasoda healthy, healthy. 
so that you can serve, you can help more. So their luxury, luxury way of life is really wasted, waste, wasteful. So uh, basic necessity, food, clothes, shelter, that's very right. To, and then beyond that, too much luxury is not good. That does not mean we should not now because of that, uh, make more money. No. The society still needs a lot of money. So those businessmen should make more effort, or more economic development. And then from the profit, you should spend more, uh, or say the, the upliftment of the poorer section of people. That's, I think, very, very important. Then individually, simplicity. Like, look, Mahatma Gandhiji, he educated from England, great lawyer, and in India, in Africa, many people follow him, but he remained like a beggar, a wonderful. But the Nehru, one roast here always like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Next question. Good morning, Your Holiness. Since you preach that, what do you think makes Buddhism, if not best, better than other religions? Kasa. Now, Jim, the Jaram Shigita, Jitanta, the Lavjit, and Zunamba, the Nangiris, and the Dutch, Jim, the Chudi, Nanchudi, Chilu Shen, the Katsan Samane, Kasore. I never sort of propagate Buddhism. Uh, actually, Vinaya, Vinaya Sutra actually mentioned unless someone asks you explain teaching. You should not teach. That's the Buddhist way. Uh, so, for example, in the West, now a uh, number of Tibetan Buddhist centers and also some Zen centers, some Kasachukti, uh, 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 Theravada sort of tradition center also you see there. The, as far as Tibetan Buddhist center is concerned, oh, one example, you see, one occasion, one German uh, millionaire is the one to donate uh, one million of dollars to build Buddhist uh, center in, in France, somewhere. In, I can't remember the name of the place. And then, the Tibetan Lama and the donor come together and mention that. And then I told him, I told them, this is not Buddhist country. This is Christian country. So building elaborate Buddhist center is not, proper, not appropriate. If you really want to build, then like Thailand, or some other Buddhist countries. And India also okay. There are many Buddhists. And India is original Buddhist sort of Kasota. Buddhist country, because of Buddhist side, because of Buddhist place. Land of oh. So land of Buddhism. I told, I told them. And then recently I was in Switzerland. There's some Tibetan uh, uh, it's a Lama since they already got some land and thinking some construction. There also I suggested better not build. And also I heard some area in Switzerland, uh, some Muslim, Muslim refugee, they want to build one mosque, so local Swiss, Christians oppose that. It's 
It's quite understandable. So I never sort of propagate the Buddha Dharma. And then also in, in the West, when I give some lecture on Buddhism, I always make clear uh, they have their own traditional religions, faith. It's much safer and much better to keep their own traditional faith. Much safer. Here, one my sort of experience, one story. In early uh, 60s, and then Tibetan refugee newly arrived from Tibet, and at that time, no proper sort of arrangement for settlement. So most of them, uh, you see, road worker, uh, very difficult, and particularly their children, very difficult. Many died. So then one, one time, one lady uh, came to see me. Her husband, Tibetan lay official, he passed away. Uh, then the mother, you see, kept, I think, uh, two or three young children. So mother, uh, the prop, the, no proper way to earn, to, 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 to take care, you see, their children. And children cannot work, very small. So mother really faced tremendous difficulties. Then at that time, of course, Christian organizations, uh, immense helpful to us. Firstly, feeding these things, then education field. So the mother once told me uh, her story, t t telling me all the stories. And then she told me, uh, for this life, she become Christian. Next life, she will be Buddhist. So that's a clear sign of confusion. <laughs> if you truly sort of follow Christianity, then uh, either heaven or hell. So no opportunity to, to become Buddhist. <laughs> so this is a clear sign. So therefore, so one time in Mongolia, some Korean Christian missionaries there. So they, uh, I mean, of course, I have a very good relation with Christians like that. So some of, some of them, you see, came to see me. Then I told them, this is Buddhist country, Mongolia. This is Buddhist country. So your missionary work, if sort of some help in education or, or health, most welcome. If you try to conversion, then this is wrong because this is Buddhist country. So I believe that. So different people, different country, it's better, safer to follow your own traditional so tradition. Therefore, I think here also, you see, I think the, 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 one occasion I mentioned, I never consider Buddhism is the best religion. Never. The best means according individual mental disposition. For this person, Christianity is best, or basically theistic religion is best, because it affects most. This person with a certain mental disposition, the non-theistic religion is best. So that way we can say. Otherwise, overall, you can't say this religion is best. Never. In the philosophical field, yes, obviously, Buddhist philosophy is much more sophisticated. Like that. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, Your Holiness. According to you, what values do you believe to be of the utmost importance to be instilled in today's youth for the best chance for a prosperous world and future? Kasa, Best, difficult to say. Under different circumstances, under these circumstances, this is best. Under these circumstances, this is best. So difficult to, to say, best. 
uh, I think there's, generally speaking, Western mentality, best and Kazada uh, Karebena. Best and quickest. quickest. Uh, so quite a number, quite a number of occasions you see people ask the best way to achieve Buddhahood and the shortest. And then I usually add the cheapest. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> like that. I think basically, as I mentioned earlier, I think we must think, we must consider most wow. important is human level. Seven billion human beings, same. Uh, then secondary level, uh, including faith, and also different nationality, different countries. That's secondary level. So we should not sacrifice basic value of human being in order to say something, secondary level. Many cases, as someone is asked, religious sort of uh, holy war, so-called holy war, in sake of their faith, killing other people. So forget basic respect of human being. So number of problem, we too much emphasis on secondary level of differences and forget basic level of humanity. So that I think very, very important. Perhaps I may say most important or best. Next question. Oh, now time to go. No. Now lunch time. Already hungry. Yes, yes. Namaste, Your Namaste. Highness. My name is Vineet and uh, my question is, what is death? Hmm? Why should we fe what is death? Why should we fear death or why do we have to fear death? And is there life after death? 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 Yeah. Hmm. Ready to rest in coffin. <laughs> <laughs> so that's different philosophical views, it's a different answer. So basically, uh, generally, death means, you see, uh, this body no longer function, that's a death. So brain uh, no longer function, then that's death. Why do we fear death? That's we have the feeling of I. I, which uh, designated on the combination of body and mind. So, body sees, mind sees, then of course, fear. Mm -hmm. And that also, you see, depends on sort of different sort of concept. People uh, who want sort of, I don't know, who accept rebirth, uh, and then uh, that means Something like changing our clothes. Present clothes become too old, no longer usable, then change. Like that. This body, certain sort of life duration. So it and come, and then uh, take new, new body. Like that. Uh, according to the uh, Christianity, then, of course, uh, after death, uh, wait, final judgment, then, after the judgment, either heaven or hell. I think the, uh, 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 the life created by God, so death also created by God. So that's beyond our questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Now perhaps the last question. Last question. Good afternoon, Your Holiness. Uh, your Not yet afternoon. <laughs> okay, then nam namaste. <laughs> Still good morning. Or oh, good midday. Good morning. Good uh, morning. 
morning okay good morning oh. so uh, here in india people are a lot of people are confused between modernization and westernization so in order to modernize people are basically westernizing losing their values roots their morals particularly the indian youth so uh, what would your message be to the indian youth modernization re no. modernization and westernize no. maybe some differences modernization the more technology these things and also i think uh the shape of the building the house architecture i prefer modern house than old house one time in switzerland you see some people quite strangely you see they prefer old sort of style big big building one time i spent one night uh, they arranged you see that that building so during a night oh the ceiling were ceiling no, very high uh, and a huge room i really felt oh maybe in this room many people even suicide maybe <laughs> or die so very uncomfortable uh like potala uh i spent a lot of so uh, uh, several years during winter time in potala from outside looks potala really kasa the manifestant 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 if you remain putala no proper bathroom hmm, or toilet you have to run uh, in order to reach kasa chuk toilet uh, a toilet if you really desperate then on the way sometimes little, little things <laughs> <laughs> it's so very difficult very uncomfortable uh, so i much prefer you see uh, when i visit uh, dodgeland because of lot of destruction during war uh, particularly the pre- when german is divided uh, then the their capital born capital born the foreign ministry uh, all this a modern house very comfortable uh, so some office is a old style in england or sometimes old style looks uncomfortable so these things i think modernize i prefer modern modernized building and a mod- modernized life more technology these things uh, many years ago i think now over 30 30 40 years ago one time in bangalore i met one i think a gandian is he, he totally opposed using car he prefer because a bull, bull car right no what's it car uh bull car he prefer that that i think a little bit silly <laughs> and also one time strangely in germany or to talk he consider using so to say these fuels and cars these are violence so then uh, according them without uh, technology just to use our uh, two two legs and then impossible to reach america impossible to reach europe i think uh, several years when you start walking from here to europe when you reach europe you already become old <laughs> like that so these are i think modernization is very very essential whether you like it or not you have to go that way western western nice re no western nice i think culture also is some involved mm. that part 
you see, India, especially India or Asian, particularly India, you have long tradition, long has a long tradition. Uh, so you must keep. I think India, I think modernize India, but still your culture, I think very very strong. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Whereas you see, uh, some in the Chinese, some some Chinese people. I think now after sort of open their economic relation with outside world, I think very quickly uh, westernized. And I think, I think at least in this room, no girl has a trussel um, society. No girl who has dyed their hair uh, yellow. Oh. Or I think very rare in India, in China, in Japan, many. Uh, yes, you can, you can change color of your hair, but you cannot change size of your nose. <laughs> Is it? Your nose quite okay. <laughs> and that respect to old lady also, you see, like that. <laughs> so I think that, that's my view. I don't know. Modernize, modernization is, I think, relevant. Westernize, uh, I think, a different meaning. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Sorry. Uh, still, still a lot of questioners, but now no time. Thank you. Thank you.